Welcome back to another episode of Podcast P presented to you by Prize Picks, a Wave Sports and Entertainment original. I got my dogs with me, Dallas Rutherford and Jackie Long. Yeah, yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we have another special guest with us today. Moy Brate. <laughs> on your own. Okay. Okay. Bros. <laughs> Cheter Diced. Trete Diced. <laughs> What, he what is he trying to say? I don't know what this language is. I don't know what this language is. This is my guy, the big Croatian, Big Zuby. I, I said 40 wrong? Cheter, cheter. Cheter desa. Desa, God, cheter desa. What did you say? Yeah, cheter iced. <laughs> Huh? I, I, I swear, I got two different no, the, shit switched. The first two sentences, on your own, uh, moi brate, that was perfect. The, 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 the last part, I didn't know what I you guess, said. I guess, but in English, what were you I saying? I was trying to say, he is him. Okay. My brother. My brother. Number, bro, bro. Bro, Broy, 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 what is that? 40. I was trying to say oh. Chet did it, that's it. Number 40. Chet did it. I was working on that you shit. Practice that oh. the day before <laughs> set. Oh, I was working Broy, on that all day. Ready? Okay. <laughs> Try it again. Do a new intro. You're going to be on let point. Me, I, can, I can do it again. Do it again, Pete. Here we go. Do it Broy, again. Broy, Broy Chet did it. Broy Chet did it. Knock it out, Pete. On your own, muy brate, bros, Chet did it. Big Zuby. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, got it you. right. Yo, you got it. shout out Babel. Work on y'all uh, <laughs> second languages, all right? You won't have this mistake right here. Definitely hey, shout out Zoom, to man, Babel. We appreciate you coming to the set, bro. Nah, thank you guys for having me. Thank yes, you. sir. Yes, sir. Before we get into the interview, we just want to give y'all a heads up. The Podcast P fam, we're shooting this before the Raptors, uh, Minnesota, and uh, Memphis game. So anything that happens during that time, we'll cover that. On the next episode, okay? Right glad, into I'm it. I'm glad you told them that, Pete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get a little confused. But that's good. I mean, you know, we're going to get to the, the, the play. Yeah. You know, everybody want to talk yeah, about it. We'll talk about, about that yeah. one later. You know, like, you, I, I can't wait to address that. I can't wait to address that. Let's get the show going. Let's get the show going. Let's get the show going. Let's go. 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 let no, no. So the story is that you guys were being pretty competitive in the swimming races. And from what we heard, <laughs> um, you weren't doing too hot. And so can you talk to us a little bit about from your side of the story, how those swimming competitions went? At the moment we did it, I never knew this was going to go out in public. But uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a pretty good swimmer, you know. Croatia, a lot of water, a lot of, you know, swimming, a lot of stuff. But I never worked on my spins in a mm. pool. Okay. That's what got me. That is, okay, I'm hearing and, a common and, denominator I was doing pretty here. Good. Yeah. I was doing pretty good, and once it got to that spin, I, I got lost. Yeah, yeah. I See, didn't and, know and where to, to go. How far uh, of your spin did you did you go halfway? You went, what you do? You, I don't know. <laughs> you started sliding out hard. the nose. I think I tell you, you had a video of that. They know how to like blow out their nose <laughs> yeah. while they're, so you were probably like trying to do I that. I was definitely holding my nose, because yeah. I know that would have hurt it. I don't know, I think I spun the wrong way. Because it's tough too, like us being long, we don't know like how close we are to that wall exactly. and like the worst and thing you want to do is like hit your, hit your, your goggles your foot on the hold on on the top of the thing and like that that would hurt. He said that you guys didn't have goggles. So did you have goggles or not? Because no. last, the story was did that we, they I were we wearing was, goggles. I, I, so I think just I had goggles. So I was, that was for the the bet we had with Pat Pat for the... How many times we can go... No, how about can we... Underwater? Underwater, back and forth. Back and forth, yeah. I thought we had goggles for the race. <laughs> Maybe you did. That's why I lost I would, probably. I don't ever <laughs> swim without <laughs> goggles. So I know I had goggles on. I can't. I don't know. I, I'm that a little was, kid. You try to see? Spin, I'm that's not spin, that's spin. Who thought of this for y'all to do that? Who thought of y'all to do this little thing. we was bored the ladies was taking photos and we was just like oh well what we gonna do <laughs> and y'all decided to do some no Olympic we shit. first off we played backgammon mm. and that was too easy for me you know these guys couldn't beat me one time <laughs> tell them something. and uh then we got in a, in a pool and we we're like fuck let's do something and uh <laughs> it didn't end up well for me for me uh, <laughs> I got I got into very confident, you know, grew up in a country where everyone swims. 
all that, but they got me. <laughs> I got I'm I'm working on my spins this year. You need to swim with Alphonse Sugan. That's what you need to swim. What's Al- his name? Al- 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 Perrin. Al- Perrin. Yeah. So you know who I mean. <laughs> Single. You need to swim with Single. <laughs> why why you said that? Because he came on here and was telling us about him swimming. That's where we first got this swimming stuff up. He's a good swimmer, he say. I'm a good swimmer too. I just can't spin. Yeah. I, did, did he say he can spin? I'm yeah. sure he can. He probably he can. was going to be a swimmer up until the point where he got tired of swimming and wanted to pursue basketball. So I'm pretty sure he had all the tricks mm. of knowing how to swim. All right, guys, we wanted to take a quick break from the episode to let you guys know that Prize Picks has got you covered when it comes to helping you make some money during the NBA season. That's right. Prize Picks is helping me cash in. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy app, and with the NBA season in full swing, you can select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and turn $25 into $250. Prize Picks is really simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds, baby. Guys, it's also that time of the year where many sports are happening at the same time. And of course, Prize Picks allows you to pick combo projections across football and basketball with specials so you can support all your teams while still cashing in. I know for me, I've been cashing in. But I don't know about you, Dad, but we'll talk about that another day. But be sure to visit prizepicks.com slash podcastp and use code podcastp for a first deposit matchup to $100. And uh, you already know what we said about this time. Cha-ching! Now back to the show. Do you have any other stories on that vacation? Were there any other competitions going on? Maybe some insight on that was, uh, the backgammon. <laughs> backgammon. Pat Pat was doing a lot of push-ups. <laughs> a lot of shots. Yeah, a lot of said. shots. That's all I know. Hey, there's some stories, but I don't want to. Wait, that's what y'all had to do. I don't want to go into <laughs> details. Push up and take shots. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. So y'all was I, I like where you're going, Zoo. What happens on vacation exactly. stays on vacation. I, I don't want to go into <laughs> other details and uh, stuff. I do. Do y'all know how to play backgammon? No. It was the first time, like, I've always seen backgammon, but, like, yeah. I didn't, never understood it. So I learned, I learned summer before and, uh, we had a board over there, and I was like, "Okay, let's let's do it. I'm gonna teach you guys how to play." And uh, Pet Beverly, he was funny, man. He, <laughs> I show him how to play, and I just started showing basic rules. We didn't go into any details. I was like, "Okay, let's play." <laughs> like, I got it. You no, know, there's some stuff you gotta learn first. Like, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll start <laughs> playing. <laughs> start playing. He he rolls the dice. He gets this number, and he starts doing this. I'm like, "Pat, you shouldn't do that." Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, he was so competitive, he couldn't win a game. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I think what really got me interested into that game was when you played like the captain. The captain on the boat? <laughs> yeah, the captain on the boat. So Zoo plays the captain on the boat. And that I don't know, funny. for some reason, it was just like, damn, this is like a cool, like real gentleman game right here. Like no, they're going dude, head to head. This dude, me and Pat Pat were playing on the boat and captain comes out, he's like, Oh, you can play backgammon? I was like, yeah, I can play. He's like, I'm the teacher. <laughs> like, okay, I, okay, teacher, let's uh, let's see what you got. He's like, nah, you don't you don't want you don't want to play against me. I was like, yeah, dude, nah, nah, I do. <laughs> we played the first game, I whooped him. Second game, he beat me, and then we played uh the one for the win. I beat him, and he didn't. He didn't call himself teacher after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after 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 Zoo whooped them out, they like shook hands and it was just like a lot hey, of respect. This is, this is a dope game right here, like a real gentleman's game right here. It and is. then that point on, like Zoo taught me how to play and it is. And now, now he I'm be like playing that. on his phone all the <laughs> now time. Now I'm like that. Stop. <laughs> now I'm like that. Zoo be running from me. I did get him. <laughs> we we played in Hawaii. I did beat him in Hawaii. I brought a board on a plane in Hawaii. I beat him so many times. He he smacked it, <laughs> and the the little chips got lost, and we never played again. So I don't know <laughs> if it was on purpose or not. Loser, Come I'm on, not gonna dude. say that it was an accident. <laughs> Rage quit. It was an accident. Yeah. A little accident. You got Solid, a, bro. You got a good team. You don't tell no stories. He said accident. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he did get better though. That time we played. Thank I don't you. know how his now made probably even better. So nice now. Look, he gonna still pass you the ball. In the game, just tell yeah, us something, he man. Trying to get the rock. He trying to get. Come on, man. Now let's hear some stuff. Hey, so Zeus, so we had we had Norm on uh, yeah. a couple of episodes ago, and uh, Norm spoke about the lifestyle change from the G League to the NBA. Obviously, we know what the the NBA lifestyle is. Yeah. From his perspective, it was horror 
uh, trips, I would say, it's, um, from you, you asked me. It's, I probably, yeah, give me your your experience of being in the whatever G League. Whatever Nona says, worse. <laughs> <laughs> I hated it, man. It's uh, it's it's a it's a league for uh, for guards. Mm -hmm. So I was just doing cardio out there. I was, I mean, I was still putting up, up down, numbers huh? because I was just too big for everyone. Yeah, but it was just all the guards. They would just take shots, and I would just set picks, and yeah. I would stay in the dunker and. Uh, it was rough, and especially like coming from Europe, you get drafted. You're like, oh, I'm going to into into the league. Like, right. I'm I'm coming to the NBA. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing for the Lakers. No, <laughs> they send you. They send my ass to uh, LA Defenders, <laughs> and <laughs> that's what the, the, what they were called uh, back then. But uh, it was tough. It was tough. You play in a Lakers facility, and uh, you know, in front of like 80 people and mm. uh it's just a guards league it's it's very fast though like mm. there's so many possessions and you're just running back and back and forth back and forth and you're not you're not getting any touches anything and mm -hmm. then the easy part was being at home and doing it. the road trips were awful mm -hmm. like we used to fly to i remember we we played uh rio grande vipers it was like on the border with Mexico and we was there for six or seven days because we played two games there and there is nothing to do there. Yeah. It's like we, we stayed in some bad hotel next to the airport. There's nothing to do. And it's just, it's a grind, man. Like all those guys that do it, that travel that way, like you travel commercial, connect, you, you know, there's no direct flights to some oh, of the places. Head, they travel economy. Damn. It's, uh, you know, they, up until a few years, I think they even shared the bedrooms on the road. So it's, wow. uh, you know, NBA guys don't have to do that, but mm -hmm. the, the guys that are not signed to the NBA team, they do. And it was, I respect those guys, man. That's, mm -hmm. that's tough. Yeah, it is. Is, it's, it's, it's a tremendous respect for the guys that like man. still have that belief for that. And, that's the crazy part. Like, there's so many guys in G League that they've been there for many years, and they could easily go to the Europe or Asia or Australia, mm -hmm. wherever, make way more money. Mm -hmm. But they, they, they want to make their their childhood dream. Mm -hmm. They want to they want to make the league, and uh, they they keep chasing those dreams. Mm -hmm. Like, they're better than me. I would I wouldn't last a long time there. Yeah. I would. I would go back to Europe as soon as possible. <laughs> at any point, you brought up going back to Europe. At any point, did you think like, "Damn, this ain't for me"? Like, I, yeah. I, sh I wish I stayed in Europe uh, and took that route. That was a lot of those when I was with the Lakers. Because <laughs> <laughs> for context, I mean, you you're on a team with Bron at this point, with Rondo, yeah. with yeah. Uh, Lonzo. That year, like, that this year is, was the year. That was the my third year. Uh, that was the last year of my contract, and I started that season. I was the uh, third string. Uh, we had uh, Javel Javel McGee mm -hmm. starting, and we played. Uh, we started the season with Michael Beasley at back of five. Mike Beasley. So I was I was way you know I, yeah. I didn't touch the floor until a few days before. And during that period, I was like, "It's over. Like this, is my last year of my contract. I'm not playing. For, I didn't play for two months. Didn't touch the floor." I'm done. I'm I'm going back to Europe. Mm -hmm. And JaVale got sick and Luke Walton called me. He's like, you're going to start tomorrow. Out of nowhere. Like, I didn't, no rotation. I didn't touch the floor that year. He's like, you're going to start. And, you know, we had Rondo starting. We had uh, LeBron starting. Mm -hmm. So, like, with those guys, it's as a big man, like, it, mm -hmm. it don't get better than that. Like, mm -hmm. playing with those guys. And we played Pelicans. They had AD and uh, Julius Randle. So, it was like, you got to guard AD first right game. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I had a big double-double, three blocks, easy. We play Memphis next game, had almost 20. Next game, Christmas game, we play Warriors in uh, Oakland. We beat them. We, Warriors with KD, Clay, Steph, uh, Draymond, we beat them by 20-something. I had a big double-double Christmas Day game. Mm -hmm. And ever since that, I, I stayed in rotation. Got traded to the Clippers and stayed in the league. Yeah. But that beginning of that season, I was like, 
Wow. I thought I'm. I was done. I'm yeah. done. I'm going back. <laughs> Mom, Euro <Dad>. League. <laughs> I'm coming home. I'm see. I'm <laughs> see you soon. <laughs> I have a, a just a quick follow up question on that because you said that the G League is a, a guard league, and yeah. from an NBA fan's perspective, like when I think of the NBA, it's predominantly a guard league. So, are you trying to? Hint at that the G League is kind of even more of a yeah, guard league yeah. than the NBA league. Yeah, at that time, yes, uh, it was it was all guards, man. We we had a stacked team too. We had a good team. Well, our uh, we we had we had a uh, Vander Blue. He was the MVP of the G League that year, and he was a guard, so he was getting a ton of shots shots. And uh, it's just at that time even the nba was everyone played small ball 2016 17 mm -hmm. and uh everyone played small ball so you know g lee just tried to replicate that and Got it. and made it even crazier it was just <laughs> up and down up and down and i my cardio was good at that like i had, i was in a good <laughs> i was in good cardio, shape but up and down. i was in good shape but uh G League does a great job with keeping you in shape and uh, especially when you're not playing on a nba your nba team mm -hmm. and uh you get you get to go down there. You stay in shape. It's very competitive. You know they run the sets from your NBA team, so it's it's good for you. But as a big, I I hated it at that time. I hated it, and I I remember uh, at the time like I would go down there. I would I would get twenty and ten easy without even getting any post touches or anything, and then they would send me back to the Lakers. I would get on the team. I wouldn't even dress up. I was not not even acting. I wasn't getting any minutes, so I started talking a little shit around, you know, to the players like I should be playing. Like, uh, you know, I can play for sure. Mm -hmm. All that. One day, my agent calls me from Serbia. My agent from Serbia. He called me. He's like, Mitch Kupchak just called us. He was a GM of the league. He said, if "You don't stop talking. He's gonna cut you." Oh shit! <laughs> that was my, <laughs> oh my rookie God. year, like yeah. two or three months in, and he he went off at me. My agent. He was like. You're a second round pick. They usually second round picks from Europe. They they don't even come over to NBA the first year. They mm -hmm. stash them with uh, some European team. Mm -hmm. So you you're lucky they brought you over. You're lucky you got drafted. Shut the hell up. Yeah. <laughs> do whatever they say to do. Don't don't say anything. Just shut the hell up. <laughs> don't say anything. Or you coming back to Europe? No one gonna get you. Like you didn't prove anything. Yeah. You're a second round pick. You got a non guaranteed contract. They don't care about you. And Who that's leaked funny. it though? Like how, yeah. yeah. Like how Ooh. did your trash word your talk like get? How did he get word of that that you were? Mitch Kupchak called my agent. Yeah, mm. but how did Mitch find out that you were? I don't talking? know. I would, Staff, that it's so you didn't yeah. say anything talk. to Mitch, did Somebody you? Snitch. No, 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 okay. I never talked, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, but but I was not even, I was not trying to, you know, be quiet about it, I right? Was, right, I was talking, shit. I was feeling good, I was feeling good because I would go down there, and dominate everyone, then I come back and no minutes, yeah. Yeah. talk your shit. <laughs> That's, That's what, what I did. Do. Look where you at now, baby. Talking your shit. It could have been worse, but <laughs> we we're here now. That's what I'm talking about. I do I do want to say on, on to your rookie year, um, when y'all motherfuckers came to Oklahoma and you played no, against Steve-O. That was Steve my second year. Oh, that was your second year. When y'all came to Oklahoma and you played against Steve-O, Steve-O like, usually <laughs> dominates every matchup he goes against, right? Like People are scared to play against Steven yeah, Adams. Yeah. And Zoo, like, had a hell of a game and Very I was high. like, damn. <laughs> like nobody <laughs> gives Steve O problems. And yeah. and you came and you like like it was it was like easy. No, that's you, uh, I don't know if you I can't remember exactly what you had. You probably I, had twenty I or thirty something that 26 night. Twenty six right? and twelve. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He knows shit. But yeah, I, was, I, was I walked away from that like damn talk your like, shit. Yeah. No. <laughs> That dude is good. <laughs> nah, we and we won that game too. And we we yeah, had like it was a young team like Lonzo, Kuzma, Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart, me, uh, Caruso. I think was on that team too. Mm -hmm. So it was all young guys, and I didn't get a lot of chances that year. So we came to play you guys. Every every t every chance I had to play that year, I was like, I gotta, I you know, I gotta, I gotta do my best. Mm -hmm. So and that 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 night, everything was. Everything was clicking, and I remember my first bu bucket was a, uh, it was against Pat Pat, and I still talk the shit, <laughs> shit to him. That's about that night. I'm like, I had my career high on you. <laughs> you talk your shit, exactly. <laughs> talk your shit. Uh, but yeah, that was a good game. I remember that game. Yeah, Zoo, you didn't know me and you used to have something in common. What is it? We both used to be Laker fans. <laughs> 
<laughs> what happened to you? I got I, traded. I, I, what I, happened to I'm you? I'm going to tell you. See, as a Lakers fan, and you remember, because you know this, in 2019, I was surprised. I was very surprised. Because you brought your boy up early, Michael Beasley. When y'all yeah, both was traded yeah, yeah. for your boy, what's his name? Mike M- M- Muscala. Muscala. And I want to know, now that we both Clipper fans, because <laughs> you know I switched the rule. <laughs> Not that many people can do that. But uh, I want to just say this. The other day when you played them Lakers, boy, oh my God, you was out there dominating. You look good. I was Appreciate excited it. to see you do this, man, because I, I, I know you got it. And, and I seen it. You had 22 points, 19 rebounds, and I don't even know what else you had. But you did amazing, man. I want to know, what was your reaction when you heard about when you was getting traded to the Clippers? It was tough. It was, uh, I mean, I kind of knew. I mean, I didn't, I did and I didn't. All the young guys, like two, three weeks before that, like everyone was, it was like we were all young, second, third year in the league, and everyone was like, no one wanted to play. Like we we played, but everyone everyone was so worried about the deadline. Like no one knew what was gonna happen, and they knew something was gonna happen. Right. And then it, it ended up just being me. Uh, I was in Boston. I I got they called me like fifteen minutes before a deadline. Magic and Rob on the phone. They're like, you're going to uh, we're trading you. Appreciate you for everything, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, just tell me where I'm going. And they say, Clippers. <laughs> well, okay, okay. I stay in the you same say, I city. Going I'm, 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 I'm going home. nowhere. I'm, I'm cool with <laughs> that. Keep my house. I'm cool with that. They say um, they just uh, waived uh, Marcin Gortat. So you're going to be a starter. You're going to get a big opportunity. And, you know, that's something I was thankful for. Uh, you know, they traded me to a place where I was going to play. And uh, then I... And I was like, okay, whatever, thank you guys, whatever, hung up. Had uh, Doc, Steve, Jerry West, uh, Lawrence Friend, they all called me on the phone. I'm like, who did you guys show me for this? Same, they said uh, Mike Muscala. I was a little surprised, but uh, then I remember that year we played Philly. Muscala had 20-something against us. He played probably one of the better games he ever had. And I was like, okay, they, you know, they, they seen that game. They... They did that trade and uh, I was cool with it. I was happy with it. I, I went somewhere where I was like, I'm a starter every night, gonna get my minutes. It's a young team and I was happy. At the end of the day, you got to stay home. Exactly. Stay Man, home. you didn't have to did move, move, pack and get and your the, family. The, the crazy part is we was playing the Boston. When I was with the Lakers, we had a shit around. We played, we were supposed to play Boston that night. I got traded after shit around. I call up. I get a call, I look up Clipper's schedule, they're playing in Indiana that night, and they're flying to Boston tomorrow. Mm. So I didn't even switch hotels or anything, <laughs> stay at the same hotel, played the game in Boston, went back to LA, same house, same everything. Come on, like talk to me. Like, like, <laughs> like, I'm telling you, yeah. later guys. The easiest, <laughs> easiest trade ever, I think. It was, and now look. You're going to get your own arena soon. Exactly. Big time. So. I'm kind of curious if, if you can share a, a shed a little light on this because, you know, in Los Angeles, California, it's known, it's been known as a Laker town. And yeah. so you've had the opportunity to play for both both Los Angeles teams. And I know Russ has, but we, we haven't been able to ask Russ yet. Hopefully <laughs> Russ comes on the podcast soon. But from your perspective as a player, What's the biggest thing that you could point to that like the big differences of being a Laker and being a Clipper, whether that's your day to day, whether that's the, the media, the, the whatever I mean, it may be. Everything, media, media, like coverage of the Lakers is way bigger than the Clippers. There's you play under more spotlight. Um, there's more pressure every night. And just the amount of people that love the Lakers, the fans, it's crazy, and uh, I I remember like I was when I played with the Lakers. I was I was no I didn't make a name for myself in the league. Like I didn't play a lot. Everywhere I went, they they knew who I was. And uh, nowadays, they know who I am. But when they talk to me, they're like, "Oh man, I, I'm so mad we traded you. <laughs> yeah. I'm, you know, I'm mad you're with the Clippers and stuff like that." But it's just it's just crazy the how this city how they love the Lakers, and uh, I felt. I felt their love from uh you know from the other side and uh it was uh, it's really it's really cool being a Laker uh 
having that support, that amount of the people. But uh, being with the Clippers now, I wouldn't change it for anything. Yeah. We both I think the now. tide is turning. I think <laughs> I think the tide is turning for sure. Tide is turning. It is though, like yeah, for yeah. real. Like uh, over the years yeah, now, with, it's more with, like with it's, especially it's a lot of like fans now. when I we just got, got guys traded. Like this coming over. When I, <laughs> <laughs> when I just got traded there, you know, it was it, that was not a lot, you know, there was not a lot of people, and then we signed PG and Kawhi, and that's when it started turning. Yeah, and it's every year it's been better and better. So where were you? So you guys do sign Kawhi, then you find the news that this guy to my yeah. left is coming over to the Clippers. Yeah, where were you when that trade happened, and did you kind of understand at that moment like the magnitude of that trade and how no, it, it was, change? It was funny because when I got traded, everyone thought that we're you know, we're not gonna be a good team. And then uh, we had a lot of good veterans paired with some good young guys. And we, you know, we, we went to the playoffs. We uh, went to the uh, game six with the Warriors first round. No one expected us to do all of that. After the season, I signed my new contract with the Clippers. It was like a few days before uh, we signed Kawhi and traded for P. And, uh, Everyone, everyone knew like Kawhi was free agent. There, everyone was like Lakers, Clippers, or uh, he's staying with the Raptors. So we kind of knew something was going on. I was at the house and uh, I was watching a show with my uh, with my wife, uh, Stranger Things, I think. And uh, <laughs> okay, I love the she, Stranger, Stranger, Stranger Things. <laughs> so, so she she was hungry. She's like, I want some ice cream, whatever. And we didn't have anything at the house, so we go to the store and. We're shopping in a store and my phone just starts blowing up in my pocket and I'm like, what is it? I look it up and it's f like a bunch of, uh, you know, alerts. And then I see it first. We traded for a PG and we're signing Kawhi. And at first, it was, I was messed up because I signed my contract like two days before. So I'm like, and they never published it like Clippers or Vogue or anyone. No one tweeted about it. So I'm like, is my, is my shit still on? Like, like, so I call my agent, I call my agent like, Are, is the contract still good? Like, what's going on? He's like, no, you good. Well, I'm like, who's getting traded? He's like, I have no idea. And then, you know, there was a few minutes while we were waiting to see who's, who's getting traded. And then, uh, you know, we seen... Uh, it was Shea and Gallo and a bunch, bunch of picks. And uh, at that time, we were happy. Like, Lou was not getting traded. Uh, Pet Beverly was not getting traded. Trez was not getting traded. So, you know, we were like, okay, the, the core gar guys are staying. And we get PG and Kawhi to add to this. And we were like, like we can win this thing. You probably didn't even have an appetite no more after that trade. <laughs> no, I didn't through. know where I was. You didn't want no ice cream. I, didn't know. <laughs> I <laughs> forgot what? about Stranger Things. <laughs> Baby, get it. Whatever you need. Shit. We got Kawhi and PG. Shit. Man, that was that was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy because we were like kind of like okay maybe we get Kawhi but then you get Kawhi and PG, PG. and PG was that year he was killing. Yeah. So it was everyone on the team was hype like. You to this, like we went without, you know, no one expected us to win any games. We mm -hmm. go to the playoffs. We we take two games off Warriors best team ever. And then we add Kawhi and PG to this. Like what did your wife say <laughs> that day? And I, what did she do? I don't remember. Yeah, you, remember, I don't you didn't know remember nothing I, after nothing, that. Huh? Nothing. That was it. I'm sure like I'm sure Christina was nervous a little bit about like yeah, trade the whole, conversations, the whole, like oh, where are we like everything, all all of that, like the contract negotiations with Clippers that lasted for like ten days, and I was, I was every day I we were nervous, whatever, and then the trade happens, and then you don't know who's who's going where, so till we found out who's who's in it, we were we were a little scared, a little yeah. nervous. So I want to know what it was like, and I want to hear both your perspectives of kind of meeting each other for the first time. I know for you, it's kind of like, hey, we're excited. I know P's probably excited, but kind of wants to, you know, it's like meeting a new group of friends. Yeah. It's like, how walk walk me through the first time you guys got to to meet each other. I don't even. I don't know. Yeah, I don't even I remember. I always wonder when they when they got signed. I was like, are these guys like. Are they gonna try to bring in someone else at my position? Like, what yeah. do they know about me? What do they know about me? What I do? Like, are they gonna get someone else? Like, and I was like, you know, because like, you know, Kawhi won a championship. PG was coming off of one of his best seasons ever. So mm -hmm. I'm like, 
these guys, they, they come in for a championship. And I'm like, I just finished my third season. Like I didn't play a lot in my three years in the league. So I'm like, do these guys even know who I am? Like, are they going to try to bring in a big man or something? Mm -hmm. So I was a little messed up, but it worked out well. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't even remember like the initial, like, yeah. Beginning, but I knew I took a liking to Zoo because, you know, obviously my wife Serbian, she knew that she was Croatian. And so off top, she was like, oh, like, you know, there's interest there. Yeah, like, I wonder yeah. how well does he speak it or like, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I mean, I think he's from Croatia. So, <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, cool, so. like, yeah, <laughs> tell him this or ask him this. And yeah, so yeah, I think yeah. like over time, yeah, it was, the, she would give me stuff that to talk to Zoo us, on. Uh, and, you know, Daniela and Christina, that's that's kind of that what has got us a little closer because they were able to, you know, Christina never had, a, none of my teammates ever before had a wife or a girlfriend coming from that part of the world and speaking that language. So it helped Christina a lot to have Daniela there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure that for Daniela, it was also good to speak a little bit in uh, wow. Serbian. Mm -hmm. So it was, that's something that uh, brought us a little more closer. Yeah, yeah, Come for on, sure. Come on, So Now I, we're just waiting for Pete to start speaking a little, <laughs> start little speaking language. Yeah. Hey, I, I, I we got went, a little better. He can I, say, I better. he can say I'm him. That's the, that's, yeah. the, that's, the, that's the only thing he can to be. I'm him. Not hello, right. not, not thank no, no, you, no. I'm him. I'm him, that's <laughs> it. Good Lord. That was one, that was one, uh, was training camp or, uh, it was, yeah, no, it was this year's training camp. He started yelling, Yes, I'm on, yes, which I'm means on. I'm him, what? but- he, What do you mean? I'm him. Oh, I'm him. He started yelling in the practice, but it's three words, but he kept saying it as a one word, yes, I'm on. So I thought he's speaking Spanish. So I'm like, what is this dude saying? So I thought it was Spanish for a second. Then he was like, yes, I'm on. He's like, I'm him. Oh, <laughs> no, <I'm like, laughs> I'm him. Yeah, I'll try to put it together. Yeah, I'm a no, work in bro, progress. You do a better job now. Who taught you that word? So I started taking lessons. So I started taking lessons. So I'm actually, uh, you know, a little backstory to that. I'm in a competition with one of my college teammates. Uh, he's actually Serbian. Um, his name is uh, Ned Golubovic. Mm -hmm. So his girlfriend is taking lessons. Um, uh, Serbian lessons and so we had a competition of who's gonna learn more and speak more fluent by this next summer so I took some lessons to try to beat her. How you doing? Yeah. You doing good? <sighs> I'm doing alright. Uh, I can almost guarantee it's hard for me because of the NBA schedule so I, it's hard to fit in time to like do my, I was doing really good in the summertime of doing my lessons I was doing them once a week but then once the season started I want to know how his wife doing yeah, she I was already she ahead. Is. Like she, she's got me beat. She was already <laughs> ahead. She's not learning that. For she's her not. Yeah, 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 yeah. She, she can actually speak sentences, and and it's it's not an easy language. Well, that's yeah. why we got Babel. <laughs> <laughs> Babel. That's yeah. one of our sponsors, and they doing okay. a good job. They doing okay. a great job. Anybody want to learn new languages? Just make sure y'all go to Babel. That's all you got to do, <laughs> and they can learn every language in the world. <laughs> I'm still learning English. <laughs> 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 so Zoo, this is, I think, your best season, right? Just efficient at the rim, you're finishing, anchoring our defense, protecting the rim, and the chemistry between you, uh, Russ, James, has been off the chart. Coming into this season, what was like your main goal um, of improvement or give us the keys to your success to start this year off yeah. of what you was – I you mean, know. I feel like it started at the end of last year. Like, I felt like, okay, you know, I had some good games and I was like, okay, I can do, like, I'm close. Like, I can do this on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. I got to have a good summer. I had a really good summer working out, uh, worked, uh, worked out a lot on my body, a lot of, a lot of my game, uh, finishing with both hands. Uh, Clippers wanted me to add some uh, finishes in the post with uh, over my uh, right shoulder mm -hmm. because they thought I'm going too much to my right hook and uh, just kind of being more aggressive to score and all that. And I had a, I had a really good summer and uh, had a great tournament with a national team. And I was, in a, I was in a good shape to start the season. So that was it, basically just like, mentality just flip, just you know having confidence in my game like seeing okay i can do this let me have a good summer of work 
so I can do this on a nightly basis. And uh, then just adding, you know, Russ was already there. He kind of started that stuff last season, just having confidence in me, mm -hmm. like finding me, believing in my game and, mm -hmm. uh, and all that. And uh, that helped me a lot. And he kept, have kept doing it at the beginning of the season and then we added James who who is also has the same mentality mm -hmm. and uh those two guys have been great for me man it's uh I couldn't think of better guys to be around mm -hmm. you know to help my game because every every year I feel like every year in my career I got I got a little better and you know learned a lot from you know time at the Lakers and then with the Clippers we you and uh Kawhi you know defensively learned so much and uh just to you know got my first playoff experience all that stuff and then having james and russ like the real point guards who make it so easy for for not just me for everyone on, right. on our team right and those are guys who trust in you they have they have more confidence in you than you do like right. russ is always gonna push you like right. he 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 told me like you missed ten shots in the paint when I pass. I don't care. I'm gonna pass you every single time, and I want you to finish. And he was like, I don't want you to kick it out to PG or Kawhi. They're gonna get their twenty shots. You go finish every time. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, James is the same way. So having those guys putting all that confidence in you, like two Hall of Famers, putting that confidence into you, mm -hmm. like you can't doubt yourself. If they trust in you. Right. You gotta trust in yourself. And right. With all the work that I put in in the summer and uh, playing with not just two of them, with everyone on the team, you, Y, and all the other guys, and having a uh, Ty Lu as a coach, like all that work is going to show. Mm -hmm. And they, you get all that confidence from your teammates, coaches, and with 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 all that work, it's going to show. Mm -hmm. I think what a lot of people don't realize is how much the chemistry between you and James have gotten so much better. Yeah. You guys work after practice <laughs> like 20 30 minutes. We uh, what 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 are we calling that? Like uh, I don't know. James don't know. Harden's training camp like uh, something <laughs> like that. It, it started like first, you know, first shit around like he was like, "Yo, Zeus, stay stay a little longer. Let's work on our pick and roll stuff." So I was like, you know, he he just got to the team. He's mm -hmm. trying to get to know guys, what they like and everything. So I thought he's going to be for a few days and, you know, that's <laughs> it. Sure, man. <laughs> now, now every shit around, <laughs> finish shit around. I got to stay. Tice got to stay. Now May's got to stay. Kobe got to stay. Brandon Boston, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bones. We all working on our pick and roll game. <laughs> every, every, after every shit around, after every practice, we staying 20 minutes at least just working pick and roll from like six different spots. Yeah. But look at you, mm. so it's paying. No, what is I, can't, it? I can't complain. You what is it good. for James that like, cause I, I know James is very like, like Kawhi, like they, they're, they're so used to, you know, doing stuff a certain way. Yeah. And their game is predicated on, you know, I've done this so many times. Mm -hmm. Like I know what to do in this situation. Yeah. yeah. What is it during those, uh, you know, y'all big man camp or, or pick and roll camp. <laughs> what is roll it? Camp. What is it necessarily that like James is 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 it more so just trying to get a rhythm of? I think, his, I think himself or like the connection think, between uh, you two. No, I think uh, what James did, he tried to uh, change some of my habits because before I used to, you know, when I would set a pick, I wouldn't roll all the way. Like I was stopping that pocket, mm -hmm. and you know, you and Kawhi would get mad at me sometimes too for just being in that pocket, clogging the paint up, mm -hmm. just getting all the way to the dunker. And that's what James wants me to do. He he wants me to roll all the way to get behind the big. Mm -hmm. So the big got to play us two and one. So he got a floater, or if they step up, I get a lob. That and uh, I think we, we just try to get a rhythm down. And uh, you know, some situations like they ice you in transition, you want me to get out right mm -hmm. away. He wants me to flip it mm -hmm. most of the times. And uh, just kind of, uh, you know, it's, you know how it is. Every player likes different different stuff. And, uh, you know, like as, like I say, you like, you know, sometimes me slipping out, sometimes flipping. He likes it sometimes the other way. So just trying to get that uh, chemistry going and uh, break down some of those bad habits. And also it helps with uh, finishing a lot. You know, we got Dante in there. Hacking, hacking the shit hacking. out of you. Bo, hacking. Carlos, Carlos over there, all the same, same <laughs> shit. 
hit hacking too. So you know, you get a ball in a <laughs> in a dunker, they hitting yeah. you. They they trying to block your shot. They trying to foul you. So it help, it helps a lot with finishing too. Mm -hmm. Just being finishing strong and doing that stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, it's been good for us. And now, few times uh, I told James I can't do it. I'm tired. And then I had a bad game. Now he's, he's like, every time we do it, you get 15 points. So what you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm not skipping it anymore. <laughs> it, it worked out well. It works out well for us. Okay. Yeah, I think um, I think just for all you gotta of us. You got to jump in once in a while, man. I, I might. I might. You know, my thing is playing Musa. Like, I, I, I like to go live against Musa. Musa now, I don't know. You might with Musa. Be <laughs> Musa out, yeah. So That's I, what I, I might, say. I might, might have to jump. I might have to jump into y'all. Uh, give him a few, give him a few, uh, a few lobs, Pete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some lobsters. Get it, get well, I mean, I, I will say, like, you know, for obvious reasons, since we've we've had James, yeah. my pick and roll play has gone down. It is. Um, so it's not much opportunities <laughs> with me and Zoo at this You're point. Right. But You're right. We I had think that like that dribble week action. We had that lob on point. On point. It was easy. Like easy. I, easy. I knew like if I got a head start on whoever I was uh whoever was guarding me, if I yeah. got like a second, a it's half over. a second it's ahead over. of him, it was over. I don't have to me. set it. I don't have to set it. I just slip out. Slip right out and then big, you gotta get a, help. You get a open look or I get a lob. It yeah. was easy. Yeah. I will say though, like with having James making the game so much easier. Like it, it's different and it took a little adjustment because, you know, for me, I get rhythm off having the ball in my hands, yeah. you know, dribbling, getting in pick and rolls. Like I, that's where my rhythm usually comes mm -hmm. from. But I think since having James, I kind of had to take it for what it is and like realize like this dude makes the best plays and the best decisions yeah. when he has the ball in his hands and his – pick and roll, you know, he can get you an open look and an mm -hmm. easy look every, every time. time he has the ball. Every so time. I think it my my mind shifted now towards like, all right, I just need to be great in these catch and shoot yeah. situations yeah. and playing off the catch situations. Um, and I think that's really where his value comes from because – I ain't gonna lie, like I've never had this many just easy, like easy. I would say other than being my my for sure my first year in Oklahoma, but more so my second year playing with Russ in Oklahoma in mm -hmm. terms of like how easy I was getting just catch and shoot yeah. situations just because the attention Russ uh, brought. But uh, James has, you know, that same magnitude, but now he knows how to manipulate a pick and roll so to just easy, open man. the floor up for everybody. So easy, like I inbound the ball to him and I'm like, what we got? Like go down there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he don't even say anything. And just be sometimes, he like, just after navigates everyone, like, where to go. He knows, like, what to run at the exact at same, exact, like, yeah. every possession. He knows, like, okay, I'm gonna get this guy. I'm gonna get quiet this spot. I'm gonna get PG coming up this pin down, or yeah. I'm gonna get PG, uh, you know, elbow, elbow touch, mm -hmm. or it's just, like, it's easy. And, uh, you know, Russ does the same shit. Russ comes into the game, mm -hmm. same stuff. He's like, they're switching one through five. Zoo set a low pick and roll. Mm -hmm. That switch, he throws me the ball, hook, mm -hmm. and then saying like, you know, he sees someone mismatch on you or Kawhi, and then they're so good. They they're just so got that a crazy basketball feel for IQ the game. is yeah. crazy. And as a point guard, it's it's different. Like yeah. point guards, that's a different like different mentality. Like they they got to think of everyone else on the floor, and mm -hmm. they they got to know like what what each player likes and what spots they like. And that, I think. Those two are one of the best in the game at, at doing that mm -hmm. stuff. And, you know, the way they set everyone up in their best positions to score mm -hmm. or, you know, attack, it's, it's amazing for yeah. them. Speaking of, of James and kind of his leadership, you can really, you know, what, what you just said, he really does know, like, his X's and O's. And it's a shame. It's funny. We've seen now Russ come over to the Clippers after getting a lot of backlash on bad mm -hmm. locker room, whatever it may be. <laughs> then we have James coming over here and they have fit so well, but there was an instance during the Laker game, P, and I was wondering if you could, if you remembered this, and if so, if you could walk us through what James Harden was telling you. It was in the first half of the Laker game mm -hmm. and James was out and you were probably around the the free throw line they were about to bring the ball down and you and James were talking and he was pointing I was so high up I didn't get any good seats cuz YT so I wasn't as close <laughs> as what I'd like to be but James was giving you instruction and again I could only I can't hear it but it looked like 
you kind of went a little back and forth and then whatever he said made sense. Do you remember, I think it was the first half, about three minutes ago in the first quarter. In the first quarter. And James is talking to you on the bench and you're just looking at him and then you kind of gave him the head nod and we're like, okay, I see what you were talking about. Does it ring a bell? It it does, but it doesn't. Like, man, I wish I really yeah, wanted it does, to. But it there, doesn't. there it goes. There's bad question. <laughs> no, great, great question. It does, but it doesn't. Like, I do remember. I don't remember the, actually what the conversation was, but I do remember we were discussing something within the game. I do. I remember the moments you're yeah. talking about, but I uh, games be such a blur to me, bro. Yeah, and it, there's Thanks for the like insight, there's, oh. there's there's like, moments that stand out within the game that but happens then, like. Five, ten times a game yeah. to the least. Yeah, like, I, it blends so, it like, it's, it, it, it's it all just to, blends together. Yeah. Like, That's why I like to be so close because you do get to hear some things and pick up on some things. And if you know a little bit of basketball, it's just a completely different game where yeah. you can, mm -hmm. you know, see what Coach Lou was saying, even the trash talking, mm -hmm. the Kevin Durant talking. You can really just get a feel. And I was just so curious what he said. So maybe I'll ask James. <laughs> Hilarious. Let's talk a little bit more about my boy Russ. Now we all, as a fans, know how much energy this guy has. P always says how he's a great leader, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, off the court, on the court, whatever. What's a good story to when you see Russell with all this energy in that practice? What makes his energy different from everybody else's? I, I don't understand it. Like <laughs> he's 16 years in the, you know, even before we warm up in a practice, the dude is jumping head to the rim. Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand it. I can't like we come in. I'm 26. I can't move. I can't. I'm. I got venom around my back. My knees are hurting. I'm like can't move until I warm up. And this dude, we don't even warm up. He's dunking. He's his energy is crazy. He's running around, yelling, talking to everyone, talking shit. Crazy. I. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> I, I. I. And I told y'all this when I got to Oklahoma. Like. I thought it was some shit he's taking. I'm thinking he's heavy on Red Bulls. Like it's something he's doing every game. Like this can't just be the norm. But I like like Zoo said. Like he's as much shit he talks towards the opponents. He's doing that with the yeah. development, like our player development team. Like he's doing it with our scout team. Like that's good. It's smoke for everybody. Exactly. Like anybody can get it. That's we how going that's Russ's mentality. Plays. Scout team on uh, the player development coaches. He he yeah, going at them. Like I've never is... I've never heard Russ been like like. There's days where I'm like ah, my knees a little, a little sore today, like... a little stiff. Like yeah, I've never heard never Russ talk hurt. about an injury. Like never. nothing hurts. Like never. Like Russ I just... never thought about it. But now when I think about it, he never said, "Oh, this hurts." Yeah, my wrist. Like, or my... You can always hear someone <laughs> like, "Oh, I'm sore. My back, my knee, my right. ankle." Never, never heard Russ. Speak never complain. Well, we all know Russ is known for a vocal leader. Okay, so Zoo, what is something he said to you that stands out the most? I think, like I said before, uh, there was some game he passed me the ball. I could have, I could have shot my hook. I passed it out. Like he got mad at me. Like I made a good play, but like I should have, really, I should have shot it. And he got mad at me. He's like. I want you to take that shot every single time. He's like, I don't care if you turn the ball over five times. If I turn the ball over five times trying to get it to you, if you miss five shots, I don't care. You got to shoot that shot every time. We're not running plays for you. You're not getting a lot of touches. You got to shoot that. PG, Kawhi, me, we're going to get ours. You got to take your shots. And that's something like when a guy like that tells you that stuff, like you got to take it. You gotta take it seriously. You got to, that's Russ. He gonna yeah. get in your ass, boy. That's Russ. <laughs> that, that is, that's Russ, I mean. I always think it's funny. I like to watch you guys like in the huddle, like when I told you to call Daniel and I was acting like I was yeah. playing Call of Duty with him. But I always like to watch Russ during the timeouts. I like to look at people's body languages and I've asked P questions on like what's going on in the huddle. But Russ specifically, I think he makes, after the game he does it, but during the game, he's always looking for his family, which I love that. He's always trying to look for his kids and show them some love. But I think we should shout out. Did you guys see the couple that the guy proposed right behind the bench last night in the I game versus the Phoenix? And Russ acknowledged the proposal. It was hilarious. Russ was Did standing he? there and he was like, 
Russ watches everything. There was a right behind your guys' bench. Nah, I didn't see it either. Right behind it, and it was hilarious, and Russ was loving it. I couldn't have been that good. I didn't hear no fans, no cheering. I'm like, that's going to make me go up. Hey, you were locked in. I was locked in. You were locked in. Russ is always doing interacting with the halftime show, too. I mean, not the halftime show, like when y'all have a like timeout. Time out. Time out. Yeah, yeah, there was some little kid the other day that was singing his heart out. Some uh, the little boy, and Russ was all into it. He was like, <laughs> man, this boy's killed it. I was like, ain't he supposed well, to be That's how Russ is, head? though. Like, he's not all about basketball. Like, there's a lot of guys in this league, you know, it's hard to talk to them outside of basketball. Like, you know, they're so, their whole life's been basketball. That that's all they care about. Like so, you, when you went off the court, you want to talk to them about something. Like it's it, you know it doesn't go a long way. Right. But for us, like first time, you know, we get after pr practice, we're in the locker room or showers. I don't know. He's like, you got any brothers, sisters? Uh, where's your family? What they doing? Like stuff like that. Like wow. he mm -hmm. he gets out of his way to like t talk to you, and he asks you about your family. What you're doing on your free time? Uh, what's mm -hmm. your family doing? How's everyone? He checks in on you, and he's like, "How's your family doing back home?" Like mm -hmm. he never even met them, but he like he always makes sure you're good. Your mm -hmm. people are what's good. I have and... friends like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I told y'all that was one of the most impressive things about Russ is that he had a like a genuine, real connection with everybody on the team. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? So that's why I was surprised when uh, he came over for the Lakers. You know, in the media, you heard all that, like, yeah, all that talk. I knew what it was. Yeah, yeah and you him. were saying, you yeah. were saying too He's before like before that. he came over. Like Russ is like one of the best teammates you're gonna you're ever gonna have. And you know, it was so hard to believe with all the shit in the media. And then he comes over, he signs for us, and it's just like, can I, can I ask you this? Has he gave you the baby yet? He gave you the baby like he gave Pete the other day. <laughs> no, no, I didn't get a baby yet. You get the baby yet? No, I didn't get a Come baby on, yet. I gotta get you a baby, man. I gotta get a baby. <laughs> we gotta get you a baby. <laughs> we got to. Well, that was funny. Hey, y'all, get started on the resolutions with Factor. So you're ready for the new year. Factor's ready to eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef-crafted, dietitian-approved meals delivered right to your door. With over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, plus veggie, and more, plus over 55 weekly add-ons, you'll have a ton of nutritious, flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. Stress less over meal times in the new year. Factors, no prep, no mess meals, free up times otherwise spent shopping, cooking, and clean up. No more wasting time in the kitchen. Head to factormeals.com slash podcastp50 and use code podcastp50 to get 50% off. That's code podcastp50 at factormills.com slash podcastp50 to get 50% off. So, so Zoo, in the last episode, we, uh, we donned uh, a new, speaking of baby, new baby to our show, uh, Coach Jackie. Okay. Right? And we were, we, were speaking, <laughs> we were speaking on what we would do if we're strategizing against Embiid. Yeah. Jackie here says he will start you and Mason to guard Embiid. What's so, your thoughts on, on that? I mean, I don't mind it, but like, if you got two guys guarding <laughs> one guy, who's gonna guard it, who's, who's open? Because now Embiid, is, he's averaging like six assists. They only got one player that's good, Maxi. okay? Whatever, so, the, whatever the hell So is. everyone else you don't care about? I don't care about them, they are not good, okay? <laughs> I need you, like I told them, I need you and Plumlee to handle that, bump him up, get him all mad. Where he can't do nothing. If y'all so like, do that, shut him down. What you if it, he's at the nail? He he does that little pick and pop at the nail, short roll, short pop at the nail. He gets the ball at the nail. Everyone, two guys in the dunker, right now, two guys is in like, the corner. Where, where's the nail? Where's the nail? Hey, right now, this we're is like chemistry. Yeah, yeah, like this one. Hey, Zoo was locked in. I'm bringing it in. Hey, Zoo was really this, like not I'm like I'm trying to see. I'm nail. trying to see how good of a coach he is. Yeah. I know a little bit. Keep going. Okay, nail is at the free throw line. Gotcha. I know where that is. You said that there's a nail in the free throw line. Like so, he got a ball at the free throw line. You know where the dunker is? Yes. So he got two dunkers. Where's the dunker? Can we him talk? <laughs> can we him talk? I can't. I can't go. I can't move forward I know if you what, don't tell me where I, the dunker the is. The dunker is right outside of the uh, free throw line, right by the key. I mean, right under the rim. 
Thank you. I guess. Okay. Yes. Oh, no. Thank you. I know. I might so, not use the right terminology, got, but I got hey, it. So Jackie, tell him. You got two guys in the dunker. Talk and you to got me. two shooters in the corner. Okay. Where is that second guy coming to Dumble from? The second guy coming to Dumble so from? So where is, let's say I'm on MB, where is Mace coming from? Mace is going to come from one of the, uh, the, the nails. From one of the nails. No, we're at the nail. nail. We're at the nail. Which dunker Who's at is, the nail garden in B? Yeah, so, mm. so who, who's going to so go? So what are we doing, coach? PG. You're going to have to come down and help. Where am I? Where? You're going to have to come down and help. You got good defense, P. You're going to have to do it all. I don't hey, care. PG. PG. You got to help him out, out, P. Yeah, figure we'll it figure out. It out. Figure it out. That's what it sounds like. Coach, do what you yeah, do yeah, yeah. Coach in the towel. Yeah. Hey, fella, hey, we got to figure it out. I put you in the game. Coming from the nail. I put you in the game. Y'all figure the rest out. Figure it out. That's what you do. That's what you've been doing for 20 years. Come on. Shit. You don't need a coach. You don't need one. I know what I'm talking about. Dude, so I want to get your thoughts and kind of put you, you know, maybe maybe we could do, you know, Jackie's the head coach and, and maybe you're the assistant coach for okay. this. And I want to know how you uh, would defend a couple other big men in our league and, and yeah. kind of get a game plan strategized between you guys as the assistant and the head coach here, Jackie Long. So I want to know what the game plan is to guard Anthony Davis. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Anthony Davis. What you got to do for him mainly because he's – <laughs> he's an all-around player. He can shoot the three. He's good inside. You know, so he's an all-around player. He can dribble. So when you got somebody like that, you have to play him. You got to force him to play outside. You can't force him to play inside. Okay. You got to force him to play outside. Live force with him to the shoot jumper. jump shots. Live yeah. with it. You got you to gotta live with it. Then you, you take them jump shots. Yeah. Okay. You know, cause so are you, we sagging off a little bit or? Not too much because he can shoot a three. He can shoot. Okay. He can okay. shoot. So, you want to give him a little, little bit. Let him know, cushion. like I'm gonna let you, but I'm really not. Mm -hmm. And but keep him out. Don't let him get in that key. Okay. Do not. That's where he's gonna so dominate. So what we doing in the post? Huh? What we doing in the post? In the post. Now y'all gonna have to do a lot of calling out switches and, and, and bumping. <laughs> you might have to trip him a little bit. You might have to trip him because you know he's goofy. You know what I'm saying? He get hurt a lot. So y'all won't have to do too much down there. We double teaming. Double, double teaming team for sure. Okay. Uh, where where team. we coming from? Baseline or uh, nail? Now you know where the nail is. Both. <laughs> you going you gonna do both. Mix because it up so he don't know what we're doing. He don't know what you're doing because <laughs> if you mix somebody toes. up, you throw his game off. You you're know right. what I'm saying? I can't think, argue with that. He only got he only got one good player on that team. We know who it is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and if we get him out the game, we good. So that's what that's what I think. Okay. All, right, all right, we got we got the next I like, player. I like I like working for this head Come coach. On, baby. <laughs> like, I'm talking about. Come all on, right, who you got next? Zoo, Zoo, okay. I want to let's let's get a little. Uh, I want to hear the assistants, you know, and then I want you to correct him if he's wrong or right here. But when Wimby's in town, how are you guarding Wimby? I mean, we. I'm not guarding him. First of all, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, we have Kawhi and PG for that, and since he's uh, you know he's. He can dribble the ball, he can play outside, he can shoot it. So him being that tall, like having PG or Kawhi on him, it's it's tough for him to put the ball on the mm -hmm. ground, on the floor. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, he's so tall, his dribble is tall. Like having PG or Kawhi or even Russ being, you know, guarding him, it changes a lot for him. He got to turn his back now and mm -hmm. that's that's not his game really. So that's, that's, how, we, that's how we guarded him and, uh, you know, I didn't get a chance to get a, you know, to get my uh, reps against uh, Van Banyama, but uh, they did a, such a great job. It's just, it's, it's difficult for him when you got these guys just, you know, waiting for you to put the ball on the ground and just, if you put it down, it's, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> it's, we going out, they're gonna my, get it. I agree with my assistant. <laughs> um, Cause when I seen the uh, game against the Spurs, uh, when they played them, Kawhi did a hell of a job. Mm -hmm. He wasn't, he didn't back down. You exactly. know what I'm saying? They kept him yeah. out of the way where he needed to be. You played a hell of a game that day. But I think it, he's right what he say. You got to have somebody that's in him to make him get rid of the ball. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You got somebody that's on him making him, because he's so tall, he can't dribble too too much. He has to pass it because mm. he, he's too long. <laughs> the only thing I did see about that boy, he got a strong ass ankle. <laughs> I seen when he twist his goddamn ankle, he was strong. It does. But, uh, I don't know how he had kept that bony ankle alive. But... You got to put somebody on him like a PG, like you said, exactly. a Kawhi or a Russell. And you know, Russell. he's going to make some of those shots, but you got to live yeah. with those. You got to live with it. Contest the shots. Day, he is 7'6". So, yeah, exactly. You know, so you don't want him in a pain just, at you all, know, at dunking all. the ball every time. And But like having him outside and just guys like PG, Kawhi, Russ, T-Man just getting into him, 
making it tough for him to dribble. That's I think James that's Harden the key. embarrassed him. When he did that little whoop, whoop, whoop. That was, that was, nice. Yeah, yeah. That was a nice yeah, move. Dude. Yeah. He pulled every game. He pulls out some mood. And I'm like, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't PG, know. Kawhi, and James, Russ, guys with like that on the team. Like every night you're like, damn, that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> that's tough. Did we talk about it on the pod? Because I was like hyped to the first time you guys played him. And P got the ball and I could just see it. Like P's going to. He's gonna try it, you know what I mean? Like just sizing him up and yeah. shot that three. I know you wanted to shoot it that oh, bad. It was I, so I, funny. I, as soon as P got the ball, I'm like, this ball is going up just to see. Yeah, and I promise you, I didn't. I I couldn't even see the rim. Like, <laughs> I shot it, and like <laughs> after I released it, it was like I, I don't know where this. <laughs> where this is going? Let me like, yeah, go in. Look good. Pray for it. I don't know where this Pray. is going. It was like golf. Like after you swing, you like. <laughs> Like did it, <laughs> bro. But yeah. his his presence in the paint, Ben Banyama, is crazy. Scary, scary. Like you see guys who watch the games, guys driving into the paint. They just see him there, and they they go back. Like it's it's crazy. He he has a, such a long wingspan. Mm -hmm. It's he change like he he blocks what three shots per yeah. game, but like he changes so many shots, and he deters people for from even taking those shots. Mm -hmm. it, like the. Those things don't even show up in a you know you know in a box score, but mm -hmm. that kind of stuff is is you know it's a big it adds a big value to the yeah his the timing he has good timing yeah, hell like yeah. a lot of those guys I'm sure you guys like you know you got some big guys that are a little goofy yeah. they're tall but like he's got that and he's got the athleticism with the timing mm -hmm. so he's he's blocking and coordination stuff too, he's that's blocking. Like, um, yeah. so we're gonna go to the final boss last big man and we're gonna you know Jackie I want you to make the main game plan here just because it's been awesome listening to you today coach. Uh, when you're guarding the Joker and playing against the Denver Nuggets, what what would you suggest for the the team to do? Oh shit! <laughs> okay, first I'm gonna call timeout. <laughs> we got to talk about this one now. Joker, he plays point guard, he plays shooting guard, he plays small it. forward, power forward, and center. Coach, now now this is Coach. now this is what we do. I think for sure we don't put him in the key at all. You got to keep him out. You got to do him kind of the same him way. Out? I'm going to tell you. He's a big dude. How do you keep you gotta him You got to do the same thing kind of what you do with Wimbiamba. You got to put somebody on him that's got energy. Russell Westbrook, uh, a, a PG, or a Kawhi that got good defense, even though I know it's hard because he's such a great player, you know, but you have to keep him outside. I know he can shoot threes. He made that little shot the other day that was far out, but he's not going to make that too often. And <laughs> I just think when you got somebody like him, you have to get your top players on, 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 on your team, which that's a hard decision because they're all so great, but you put your top one on them to make him get his energy and keep passing the ball. You want him to pass the ball. You don't want him to shoot. So you keep him out at uh, the three-point area, and, and and you just play good defense on him and force him to pass the ball. Okay. And but that's waste, how you do it. I don't, 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 Come on, you gotta coach. look. You want him to, you want him to shoot and pass. Meaning, you know, you know, he's not gonna make the shots. Most likely, he's not. Uh, he's not gonna make them all the time. He's shooting like sixty percent from. A that's, not five, that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. No, that's, that's not awesome. good. That's not wanna, good. So, that's so we want him. We want him to shoot threes, not shoot in the paint. Exactly. Okay. Right. That's what I said. I get, Behind I get, the three. I get, I get yeah. what you're saying. Coach. Okay. Make, force him to shoot. So threes. you would have a like a wing guard him, not yeah. a big man. PG. <laughs> It's all on him, baby. Man. Coach, I had a hard time with <laughs> hey, him. Good luck, Pete. Hey, <laughs> good luck. Pete, who was your first? Do I get any help? Do I get any double team? Kawhi. Okay, so me and him double him? <laughs> come on, you got to have a claw with you. <laughs> Why not? You still, come on, you and the claw do good okay. together. Okay. Shit, that's easy to get in. Watch when y'all play them again. Easy that's work. That's what we got to do. <laughs> easy, easy work. work. <laughs> easy work. <laughs> Just I'll no Coach sure, Jackie I'll said that. I'll make sure Pablo sees it. <laughs> yeah, you, you come on, man. I, I know what's going on. I know what's going on out there. That's good. some good insight. Steve Bomber. Our last segment of the show, Postman P, where we read questions from the fans. Hit us up on our socials and email us at podcastp at gmail.com with any questions you got you guys might have. You might hear it on the episode. Dow, who we got first? So the first question comes from Matt 
attack and he wants to know basketball is a team game of course but keep it a buck what individual milestone of your career do you cherish most so far individual uh honestly i would say the all-star nods just because of like where i come from how far i've i've gotten i would say those in all nba awards just because a kid coming from palmdale not really knowing how far i could go or how how far i could take it being from a small city um and being doubted my whole career my whole life um and just to kind of cherish um and appreciate you know what god has done for me i think that's probably the the biggest thing that kind of stands out for me and what i hold on to the most from an individual standpoint but you know, obviously, no cliche. Like I'm more of a team oriented guy, but I do, you know, share and and appreciate that part of the journey as well. What about you, Zoo? <laughs> All NBA. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish I wish <laughs> I wish it was something like that. But uh, I don't know. Uh, coming into the league, everyone was like, uh, you know, everyone was like, oh, he can't rebound. He can't rebound. So having 29 rebounds in a game, that's mm -hmm. that was. That was pretty nice for uh, dope for me, and mm -hmm. uh, especially I never had a twenty rebound game, twenty rebound game, yeah. and uh, before that game, and I was always like, I want a twenty rebound. Then that game, I had twenty nine. We gotta talk about that, like, <laughs> bro, you had thirty one and twenty nine, and you fucking foul out no. <laughs> <laughs> to get thirty rebounds. You fouled out, yeah. <laughs> oh, T.J. McConnell, man, <laughs> he said fuck. He fouls out. T.J. McConnell, he got me. I thought he he went for a layup. I was like, I'm gonna block this and I'll get a rebound. <laughs> that's it. Like that's the perfect way to go out. And I go straight up. And I feel, I feel, I always feel like I'm straight up. Yeah. I, I, don't, I never fouled. <laughs> but uh, I never fouled. I never fouled. <laughs> I, I never fouled. That's what the rest tells me. They, they, I'm the only guy in the league that never fouls. But uh, I went straight. I feel like I went straight up, blocked it, cut a rebound. They call a foul. <laughs> we all was that. devastated. I ain't gonna lie. When, when they called that foul, like we was hurting. Just I had as to much go to you. the bench. Like with four minutes to go, I was so disappointed in myself. Like I had thirty one <laughs> and twenty nine, and I was so mad. <laughs> I was sick because like I wanted that thirty rebound yeah. so bad. I want to ask both of y'all: What's more rewarding, though, All Star or All NBA? I feel like all NBA. I never all had NBA. any of them. I feel like all NBA is first team, second team, third team. That's fifteen guys. Yeah. All stars is twenty twenty four. Yeah, I say I would say all NBA has carried way more, way more than all all star nod. All NBA, you're talking about guys that the whole body of work for that year is like that, that's what people are accounting for, and what Zoo said, like it's. There's 12 guys on the West, 12 guys on the East. And then you got injuries, reserves. Yeah, and all you that. got injuries, so you end reserves. Up with 30 guys. Yeah, all exactly. Stars. Exactly. Just played 15 guys. Yeah, 15 I, guys. I see that all NBA. Yeah. yeah. And we do need to make a special shout out to the one and only Paul George, who is now the 100th leading scorer in NBA history. I cracked so, top on it. You know, talk, talk about an individual milestone. <laughs> top okay. top okay. Top okay. Top We're right now. We okay. ranked. Okay. Come on. Ah, That's come tough. on. That's did, tough. A, did a young PG ever imagine that? No, nah, you know what's crazy? Like, I, I mean, I would, I would look up like, damn, Kobe scored thirty thousand, like. Malone, like Kareem, like these dudes scored 30,000. Like I always would look that stuff up. And then my first couple years in the league, I would I would be tracking like, damn. I, Am I on the pace? Yeah, <laughs> I'm never gonna I'm reach behind. these numbers. <laughs> <laughs> but to now end up being, you know, top 100. And, and that's a long shot away and from- with, uh, with the injuries you had? Yeah, to, you know, the you injuries. few seasons. Like, you know, 14 seasons I played, but realistically 10 seasons exactly. nine seasons i played fully so yeah. you know to to again be where i'm at um and it's, to overcome the injuries and still have the longevity to still be playing through 14 years up until this point yeah i mean i i, I definitely you know appreciative of 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 cracking that list but so. That's, that's, it's, it's, that's a lot of bucket getters on that list. Now you on a hundred though, P. I'm, I'm top of the list. Yeah, you got some time left. Yeah. They came out with a time. magazine right now, top hundred. Guess what? 
He on it. He there. <laughs> he there. Shout out Grant Hill. He actually passed, and that's even wild to even be yeah. like, yeah, I just passed Grant Hill an all time leading. Yeah, scorer. Grant Hill, yeah. Big. <laughs> but it's the truth. You know Grant what I mean? Hill. So Y'all shout Simone. out Grant Hill. Y'all some on Big Zoo. Y'all, Y'all some on. <laughs> on your own. On your own. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Nasty. Well, yeah. <laughs> <On your own. laughs> well, here's our number two question. Uh, everybody, I was in the YouTube comments this past week, and a lot of people in the YouTube comments didn't believe I was in there. First of all, mm-hmm. you know, so because they kept saying the whole week, talk about something that happened this week. This dunk, this dunk that happened. To our, our friend over here, Paul George by LeBron James, old ass. Oh, um, <laughs> they kept asking me in the comments, talk about this, talk about that, talk about the dunk, talk about the dunk. And I said, we can't, we can't talk about the dunk because they thought it was live. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't live at the moment. You know what I'm saying? This is a pre-recorded show. So everybody thought they we was gonna talk about Paul George getting dunked on by LeBron. So now <laughs> we're gonna ask him the question that I promised him. PG. <laughs> I'm gonna turn this way. How did you feel getting dunked on by LeBron James? <laughs> huh? Cause uh, everybody said uh, you got dunked on. <laughs> well, you know what? A uh, old saying, what starts fucked up, usually ends <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> so bro, that play, I'm like, I got the ball, right? And we're going in transition. Uh-huh. And I see T-Man, bro. T-Man looks wide open in out of corner. nowhere. I think D'Angelo comes and like takes the pass away from T-Man because I'm, I'm looking to throw the ball ahead to kick it to T-Man for a wide open corner three. Right. Soon as I get ready to throw it, boom, D'Angelo just comes out of nowhere and takes that pass away. Yeah. So now I'm like caught like, fuck, where do I go next? Then next person, well, well, throw it up to the biggest motherfucker on the floor. <laughs> like, Zoo help. And it was it was close. Yeah, <laughs> it was I almost, cool. I almost had got it. it over. That play almost never happened. <laughs> <laughs> you know what was a great thing about it though? I was so glad you didn't jump. Yeah, no. I fuck was that. so glad you fuck didn't that. jump. Because you look, you should have seen your face. Yeah. And you should have seen James Harden's face. James Harden looked like Damn, this old man getting his ass up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, you so was listen, like, so, so after, so after I throw it to Zoo, or uh, tried to get it over top uh, to Zoo, ball gets, I think AD, AD deflected yeah. it right. AD deflects it. LeBron gets it. So it's already fuck. I fucked the play up. Like, <laughs> damn. So then I'm like, they, AD tips it. LeBron gets it. So now he's going full speed down the court. So I see a guy to my left. I'm like, all right, let me try to cat and mouse this a little bit. I think, you <laughs> That's know, what gets you, cat and mouse. The cat and mouse gets you. <laughs> you but usually Bron gets it up. Yeah. Not both. <laughs> usually Bron gives it up to get it back, right? Yeah. So I see he's not giving it up. So like next, my next train of thought is like, all right, let me try to pick him up a little earlier. Like, you know, but at the same time, it's like, all right, I got to get ready to absorb the contact too. Oh. So I'm like kind of trying to back up a little bit at the Scary. same time. I don't know, bro. It was just like a deer in the headlights. Like, I don't know what to do right here. Like it, before I could think about the next thing to do, I was just stuck. Like that was almost you, P. Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't jump. I mean, nah, I think it people wasn't, blew it you up. Didn't jump. It wasn't That's that bad. Let's, 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 I don't think, I mean, he took off from far. Yeah. And you was there, but like I don't think it was that bad. Like you kind of got out of the way. Yeah. He hit you. You got out of the way. You didn't. You didn't fell. Yeah. Like, if you fell down, if I would have fell, it would have been because like, people. It would have been you like. <laughs> yeah, but I don't right. get though, Pete. Why they call a foul on you? You didn't that, foul that him. part. Uh, and I, I asked Bron like, "Why you, you shoot a free throw?" I'm like, like, "Bro, did I foul you?" But he was like, "Not I at think, all." Uh, in a restricted, you got to jump. If you don't uh-huh. jump and there's contact, I think that's a foul. I'm gonna be honest. I don't think you got dunked on. I don't. I, I mean, don't consider it was a, a dunk on. I, I but. think for what it is, like for LeBron to still show that athleticism at 39 oh. years old is yeah. crazy impressive. Nah, like, it's, it's 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 crazy. But you he asked took him, call from you far. asked I asked him because like, I want I wanted as, to ask you if you asked him. As I mean, I didn't have nothing else to do. Like, I had bro. a stupid look. Like, <laughs> hey, bro, did, did I, you, bro? I, needed, I needed some help at what? that moment. Like, he said, he said no. He was like, nah, bro, you didn't foul me, and I and I was like, 
cool. At least I, I got something to take yeah, to the grave. Yeah, on yeah, this. yeah. Like, did, I, I, was, did he, I didn't follow him. him. I, he didn't dunk on me. I didn't. How did I follow him? And the way they were calling blocking fouls that whole game, that's another story. But whew, yeah, my what did he say to you when y'all hugged at the end of the game? No, I, I, I just you know told him happy belated. Uh, oh, okay. His birthday just passed. So I just told him happy belated. Because I seen the picture. I thought he was going to joke with you about the dunk. <laughs> no. <Nah>. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I would have thought like, and when it happened, I thought it was crazy because it was like everybody in the fucking arena was standing crazy. and the, the, the gym's going crazy. So I thought it was worse than what it was. Yeah. When I when I saw it, I was like, oh, it, mm. not that bad. It was crazy that he banged that shit, but. I didn't, I didn't stand up. I was just like, oh, okay, The only thing, cool. that it probably wouldn't even been that big if y'all would have won that damn game. If we would have won. Yeah, man. Nah, it was, exactly. it was on Instagram far before <laughs> nah, that know. game was over. So. Dude, what's it like? Because, you know, you always see, uh, it'd be interesting if we can get, you know how sometimes they show certain angles and you can see the whole team's reaction off of a play like that? Like, what was your, we saw James Harden's reaction. Did anybody on the bench, like, you know, they hit one of those, like, Oh, oh, like they get up real quick and then they forget. I don't know. I was running back because I, I was mad I couldn't get that uh, when he threw it up. Uh, AD, tip, like, it was so close. I had my, like, I was right there and I was mad I didn't get it. I was just mad. Like, I didn't care about dunk. Like, I get dunked right, on. Right, right, Everyone gets dunked on and it's just two points. I did three points in this case. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I didn't care. I was just mad. I seen the dunk. I turned to Ty Lue. I was like, you know, I was mad. I was mad they were making their runs. So I, I didn't like take like, oh shit, like yeah. Seeing like, see when you're in this league for like this, this, this time, this, so much, so many years, like you see a lot of dunks. You get dunked on. You dunk on people. So like, it's not that. James did have that look though. Like I hate when James do that <laughs> shit too. James be <laughs> going. He'll give you that look like. <laughs> you be like damn. <laughs> <laughs> James, he do funny. give you that look. <laughs> <Fun. It'll be laughs> like, he really was looking like, damn, he got up like that. Did they? Did they joke on you at like at the end of the game? Did anybody say anything nah, besides nah. looks like that? Like, nah. I'll be looking at you like, <laughs> nah, nah. Nah, if we won, if we won, the probably they probably would have said it. something yeah. if we did win. But yeah. we, everyone was mad. We lost that game. Right. Cause that's was, a game y'all should have won. Man. We should have, yeah. So that's why. It, no one said anything. Well, but I learned my lesson. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny though. I thought was, you was gonna take a charge though. I was about bro. to, but bro, he was going so fast. Like you should not have taken a charge. Yeah, that would look no, more no, no, stupid. No, I would have. If like, cause uh, I didn't think he could still get up like that. Like that with someone crazy. in front of him. Like I know yeah. he can do that with a clear uh -huh. lane, but I didn't think he would try it with me still mm -hmm. being in front of him. Like usually he'll euro, or you know he'll absorb the contact into a layup. Like. But he had bad intentions. He wanted you <laughs> from the second that. he had it. He wanted you. <laughs> he was thinking about Birdman. He wanted one. you. Yeah, he wanted yeah I'm like the whole time, like, cause you know I made a turnover, so I'm like in my head, like I gotta make up for this. Like, let me see if I can steal, <laughs> steal the ball or steal the the the, the playback. And then you can't just run so I'm out thinking, the way. Like, all right, take stupid. the charge. But he was, bro. He was. It was. It was literally like a bull. Like, I'm not taking no charge here. And then once he took off, it was like, yep. <laughs> Get out the way. <laughs> well, y'all can't, the, the fans, y'all can't say we didn't ask the man the question. We did, and I will be in Monday's uh, 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 YouTube comments again. And anything y'all want to ask, I am not scared to ask the man. <laughs> we do got, we got, we got another question, another Postman P question. I didn't realize, like, I don't know, up close when we had Gordon Hayward in the episode. I didn't recognize the the correlation between him and Kobe, like them two looking alike. Um, but after I read the comments, I was like, damn, he do have like some Kobe features. I think it's the, <laughs> like, what, what? why do you think, like, what is it though? Like, what, okay, I think, yeah, I think yeah. it's the nose, bro. Like he has like a- Cheekbones, like I think there's high like, cheekbones. I mean, it's kind of hard to compare the two, but, but. Yeah, no, I mean, but what, like what, Cause I, I do like like I said the 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 cheekbones Cheek definitely bone. and I don't know he just had like some some Kobe Bryant features that like once I don't think they look alike but after I, was, I just didn't look at him like that I ain't gonna I didn't either when he was here but right seeing like yeah some of the stuff they side, say I was yeah. like damn there is like a little like resemblance there like hey he got game he got <laughs> he got game shit he got a little Kobe in he got him, a little shit. Kobe in him he got a little Kobe on yeah him. on that note Clipper Cheryl emailed us about other NBA players having doppelgangers. Like who else in the league 
Reggie Jackson. <laughs> Reggie and Bobby Schmurda is probably <laughs> that's the best. One. Bobby Schmurda and oh, Reggie yeah. is probably one of the better comparisons. Yeah, that's, like it's close. Yeah, it is close. If you saw him out, you like, damn, uh, he's one of them. Like, <laughs> either he raps or he hoops. Well, well, nobody else. I did well. see uh, Tobias and J Cole. They Tobias have Tobias and J Cole. They they do look alike. I know he's Drake not, and Fred wait, Van Vliet. He not in the <laughs> he he's in the NBA, but he's not a player in the NBA. Who the the referee that the looked like uh, oh, Gucci Mane? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's his name? James. James. He's a referee. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> Gucci Mane, Lakers GM Rob Pelinka. With, oh, uh, and uh, uh, Rob Lowe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 Jim Carrey. And, uh, uh, Rick oh, Carlisle. Rick Carlisle. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. That is a good one. That's what kind of uh, Who yeah. else is, is other good ones? Oh, Usher and T. Morant. Yeah, we've seen that one. They, they do they do resemble. On that note, shout out job, man, going through the tough times. Uh, I've had labrum surgery, so I know what that's like. So it's. What is that? Like, how does that feel? What is that? It, you, you can't. So when I tore mine, I could not raise my arm higher than my shoulder like mm. it's the highest my arm could get and it, it was I think like I remember that too when yeah you it was like on. it was certain ways I had to lay down certain ways I had to sleep like Damn. it it just bro that shit hurt like I could not raise my arm like and that's crazy he just got back you just got both shoulders right I tore my labrum and my other side I tore the rotator cuff mm. So I was they, talk about yeah. not being able to wipe your ass for like a month. Me and my wife got real close. Now, 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 now the whole baby come here. Now the whole towel story. Now the whole towel story is making it a, lot makes a lot of sense. It makes yeah, a lot of sense. Yeah, you hear that? Remember the brown towel? It all makes sense now. <laughs> Y'all don't got a little brown shit when y'all like so that. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you nasty as hell. <laughs> I came up. Speaking of lookalikes, here's a crazy PG lookalike that came in from our fans. So after y'all beat the Suns, this picture went viral. And I want to know, P, and from all y'all, do, don't this guy look like Paul George? <laughs> That's your twin. George Paul. George Paul. <laughs> That is sick. Uh, you know what's funny? So Daniela was like, oh, you guys got Zoo today? Like, let me see the rundown. Like, what questions are you going to ask Zoo? So I'm like, all right, bet. Like, I showed her our, our rundown, and then at the end, it's that picture <laughs> on the rundown. And she was like, well, let me see. So she's looking at it. She's like, he kind of does look like you. Like, <laughs> and I'm sure, like, you know, he's growing the beard. He's growing the little hair out. Like, I'm sure he's he's just going with it. But yeah. uh, nah, he, uh, it, he does look like me. <laughs> nah, Can you zoom in a little bit, make it bigger? I was, uh, a little version. Let me see his face I was on good. Twitter, I seen a picture and I'm like, why would someone have <laughs> a cut out of PG in their living room? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how did that in there? Life size. <laughs> That is hilarious. And That's then I see all the comments that saying he looked like PG, and then I looked and I was like, <laughs> "That's a little something." <laughs> we need you with some glasses on now, P. <laughs> nah, he does. He does kind of look like me. He got like a little, a little hint. He got one percent of me in there. Hilarious. A little huh? Nothing too crazy. <laughs> Hey, uh, so shout out Jordan. We gonna hook you up with some podcast P merch. Uh, you my guy, man. You my twin, my little <laughs> twin. We gonna hook you up with some merch, bro. Appreciate you. Uh, speaking of merch, we got a little something for our guest, Big Ooh, Zoo. Big Come Zoo. On, Can man. we get a little merch? Oh, oh, I got a P fan. Oh, look okay. at you get the you part of the Big Zoo. Come on, we got a hat in the head. We got we got triple XL for Big Zoo. Oh, look, Eddie putting it on right now. Yeah, hell yeah. We love our guest. Yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, you look good. I look good. You look good, brother. On your own. Come Say on. it, monkey. On your own. Yeah. <laughs> on your own. Come on, baby. On your own. Hey. On that note, man, that's a wrap, Big Zoo. We appreciate you once again for coming through Podcast P. Stay tuned for the next episode. This will drop Monday. And I'll be in the YouTube comments. <laughs>